Today, we're gonna to learn how to read digital inputs using our Pi Pico and build a circuit to include push button control. As usual, the parts you'll need are listed in the description below. You'll also find a link to the article that covers everything from this video. Before we get started, let's take a moment to talk about what a momentary push button is. This is a type of switch that can open or close a circuit across two connected sides. You'll see that there are four legs on the button. The two legs next to each other on either side are not normally electrically connected, while the legs directly opposite are connected. When the button is pressed, all four legs become electrically connected. It can be difficult to know which leg is connected to what with just a quick glance. An easy way to ensure you always connect the button appropriately is to do so using two legs that are on opposite sides of the button at an angle from one another. Now let's put our circuit together. We'll use the onboard LED connected to GPIO pin 25 as our output. Before we start to add the button portion of the circuit, we need to connect the positive 3.3 volt rail of the Pico, this is the fifth pin down on the right side, to the positive bus of the breadboard. And the ground rail of the Pico, we'll use the third pin down on the right side to the ground bus of the breadboard. It's usually a good idea to place the button across the center of the breadboard. On one side, we'll connect one leg of the button to GPIO 20, and on the other leg to the ground bus. We can honestly use any of the 26 available GPIO pins on the board. Just make a note of the pin number for programming later. We'll also want to add a 10 kilo ohms resistor between the leg connected to GPIO 20 and the positive 3.3 volt bus. This will act as a pull-up resistor. A pull-up resistor is just a fancy term for describing how the resistor is acting inside the circuit. Pull-up and pull-down resistors are an interesting topic and deserve their own video. For now, you should know that without the pull-up resistor in place, we would consider the GPIO pin floating. This means we wouldn't know whether it's at a logic level of high or ground at any given moment. This weak pull-up resistor will help ensure that we know what the state of the GPIO is when the button is not pressed. Later on, we'll be able to replace this external resistor with an internal pull-up resistor. With the hardware in place, let's dive into the code. First, we'll import the pin class from the machine library. Then we'll create an LED object assigning it with GPIO pin 25 with the mode of out. This will set the onboard LED as an output. Next, we'll create a button object assigning it with GPIO pin 20 with the mode of in. This will allow us to read the input voltage from the pin connected to the button. It's a good practice to initialize an output pin with a known state. This will ensure we know what the pin is doing at the time of startup. To determine whether our button is high or low, we simply need to call the button.value function, leaving the space between the parentheses empty. Since our button has two possible states, either open or closed, we'll need a conditional statement like if else to determine what action to take based on the provided input. Here we're stating that if button.value is equal to zero, meaning the button is pressed and pulled to ground, then we want to set the LED value to one turning on the LED. However, if the button dot value is not equal to zero, meaning the button is not pressed and pulled high, then we want LED value to be zero, turning the LED off. So now if we run our code on the Pico, we can now use the button to control the LED. Now earlier, I mentioned that we could get rid of that resistor. One of the great features of our microcontroller is that it has built-in pull-up and pull-down resistors on each of the GPIO pins. Removing this external resistor won't have a huge impact on our code, but we will need to modify one of our initialization values. When defining our button object, we need to specify pin.pullup as an additional argument. Now when the pin is initialized, it will have the internal pull-up resistor enabled. After making the changes to the circuit and uploading our code, you'll see we haven't altered the functionality at all but we did streamline the amount of hardware we need to accomplish our goal. In this video, we built a circuit to provide digital inputs to our microcontroller and view the output via the onboard LED. We also learned how to use a conditional statement if else to control the logic portion of our code. In our next video, we use analog inputs to read voltages across a wide range. Until then, thanks for watching.